Hello, in this video, we're going to formally define revenue recognition. Like comedy, accounting is also all about timing. And one of the important principles that guides us on the timing is revenue recognition principle. We've talked about this as well as matching principle in chapter one. And now let's formula, formally redefine it again. So a company must recognize revenue when goods or services are transferred to customers in an amount that reflects the consideration the company expects to receive in exchange for those goods or services. So this principle tells us two main aspects. The, one, the number one aspect is when, right? When should I do the journal entry to recognize revenue? It is when we transfer the service and goods to the customers. And the second aspect is how much. How much should we record in the journal entry? Um, and this is really related to what the company consider they will receive in the future. It's not what the market said, it's more about you know, the actual amount, how you're gonna allocate the amounts into these uh, products or goods you sell. So we're gonna talk about this in detail and specifically the FASB identified five key steps in applying this rule, this principle above and the key steps are the following five. Step one is to identify a contract with a customer. So we're gonna define contracts specifically uh, in the next slide. Um, step two is to identify the performance obligations in the contracts. Well, this sounds really like law. Uh, we have a new definition coming up as well. We will, like, basically, you can remember performance obligation as promise. How many promises are there in the contract? That's step two. Step three is to determine the transaction price. Of course, we need to know, you know how much should we record. Uh, and step four is to allocate the transaction price to the performance obligations. Um, if you have more than one promises of goods or services you are going to provide um, and they are sold in a bundled price, right? Maybe you have some discount given. Uh, how, am I, how am I gonna allocate the total price into these, each of these promise you gave? And finally, step five is to recognize revenue when each performance obligation is satisfied. Now we're gonna talk about step one. Uh, well, before talking about these five steps, I'm sorry, let's just recap what revenue re uh, recognition is. And we have some examples that we have done you know many many times and this is the most straightforward case and everybody have learned it so we go forward like quickly but just to give you a refresh in your memory uh, this true tech industries is a company that we will use throughout the whole uh, week and it's also used in the textbook so true tech company uh, true tech industries they sell these Tribox. It is a gaming console that allows users to play video games individually or in multiple player environment over the internet. And this Tribox is only a gaming module and in includes no other goods or services. Now this sentence basically says it's very straightforward. It only has one promise, just selling the boxes. Uh, when should True Tech recognize revenue for the following sale of 1,000 try boxes to uh, its customer called Com Stores? Now, on December 20th, on this date, the customer Com Stores orders 1,000 try boxes at a price of 240 each, promising no payment within 30 days after deliver. Promising payment, sorry, within 30 days after delivery. So this is the order date. Now you just order the uh, you know the try box. You haven't paid us anything, and uh, for True Tech, we haven't shipped the products. We are just establishing you know a verbal contract or something. Should I make uh, any journal entry? No, we should not. There's nothing for us to do because we haven't shipped it. Right? The timing is not is not correct. Then on January the first. 
TrueTech delivers 1,000 try boxes to come stores to the customers and title to the try boxes transfer to come stores. Now, this is the day when you do the following journal entry. In other words, this is the day you should recognize revenue. And what should we do? Uh, we, since the try boxes of uh, customers, which is Comstore, Comstores hasn't paid us yet. Uh, so there's no cash. Instead, we're gonna increase the, an account, a call accounts revenue uh, receivable. This is uh, in a total of uh, $240 times uh, 1,000 boxes. So it's 240,000 boxes. And on the credit side, we have an increase in revenue which is sales revenue for the same amount. Now, crediting sales revenue is what we call recognizing revenue. Uh, then when um, you know, the customers finally pays TrueTech money, this is on January 25th, TrueTech received $240,000 from Comstores. Here we don't recognize revenue. We already did that in the previous day. And here we just you know, debit cash because we receive cash. And now we don't have any uh, cash to be received in the future. So in accounts receivable, we should reduce um, the am same amount, which is $240,000. Now, let's formally get to the five steps. I wish every transaction is as straightforward as the previous exercise, but sometimes we have more uh, complicated situations. And in this lecture and um, for this week, we're gonna talk about all those complicated situations. Now we're gonna focus on number one, identify the contract. So what is contract? Uh, you know, contract, of course, is a legal obligation or legal binding. Uh, but for revenue recognition per se, there are a slightly different. We focus more on the following characteristics of a contract. First, you're going to have commercial substance. What does it mean? It means the contract is expected to affect the seller's future cash flows. So if you know we need to go to the law to testify for something, uh, this sounds like a contract we make with the judge, but it really isn't a contract in terms of revenue recognition per se, because we just help to testify. Uh, there's nothing uh, gonna affect the future cash flows. So it is not a contract in that sense. Uh, number two, you're gonna have each party's approval. Of course, everybody should sign the contract. Um, number three, rights and obligations. Each party's rights and obligations should be specified. Even if in a very simple transaction, when I purchase, say, a dress or a suitcase from Macy's, right, I will have the right, is, which is the product that I purchase and obligations for me, for the customer, is to pay the price as tax. So, you know, in each contract, there should be a very clear rights and obligations, for sure. Uh, number four, payment terms. Well, of course, you're gonna pay me within 30 days, more than 30 days. How are you gonna pay me in cash, uh, all at once, or you're gonna pay me a note receivable so we, I can accrue interest? The first four are very straightforward. Now, number five is kind of something you have to pay attention, which is called performance. It means a contract does not exist if both parties can terminate a contract without penalty before any obligations are performed. Now, let's look at an example. Again, back to the com stores and try boxes. A uh, com store ordered this 1,000 try boxes systems uh, on December 20th um, at a price of $250 per unit. Now assume that the customer and TrueTech both can cancel the, the order without penalty prior to delivery. Um, and then TrueTech made delivery on January the 1st and received the money on January 25th. Everything is the same except the cancel part. Now, when does TrueTech's agreement with the comp stores qualify as a contract for purpose of revenue recognition? 
I'm not asking you when to recognize revenue or do journal entry. I'm just asking when is this agreement qualified as a contract? Well, the agreement qualifies as contract on January the 1st. That is because any date prior to January the 1st is the date that you can cancel the order without penalty. So we have to set, um, you know, satisfy the characteristics of a contract as what we just talked about in this the number five. Okay, the first one is quite straightforward. Uh, identify the contract. Now let's get to the second step, which is to identify the performance obligations. What is performance obligation? Uh, it is defined as promises to transfer goods or services to the buyer, and the promises are accounted for separately if they are distinct. What is distinct and what is separately accounted for? Uh, well, a, per a performance obligation is accounted for separately from other performance obligation if it is distinct, which is the case if either you know, number one or number two. So as long as you satisfy one of these two, you should be recorded separately. Now, the first case is that the seller regularly sells the goods and services separately. Like for example, a customer purchased some things in Amazon. Uh, I often does. Like sometimes I purchase detergents, um, you know, laundry detergents. And when I bought that, you know, I also purchased a lamp. Lamp and detergents was, are sold regularly, uh, separate in Amazon. They have two, you know, uh, separate web pages. So that's like totally separate. In that case, my order consists of two performance obligations. The second situation is when the seller could sell it separately or um, sell it together, but you can um, you know, use it readily available with the existing readily available resources. We will talk about these two using an example. Again, we go back to TrueTech. Now TrueTech not only manufactures the TriBox, uh, but it also manufactures also the subscriptions. Now, this is a very, very classic example about you have a box and then you have a subscription, right? Now, the TriBox system includes this physical TriBox module as well as one year subscription to the TriNet multi user platform of internet based games and other applications. This true tag sells the individual one-year subscription to the Trinet platform for $60. Um, the customer can access to this Trinet using a TriBox as well as other gaming modules. That means we can simply just buy the Trinet subscription and we don't need a TriBox. We can use other brands, right? Uh, Number three, TrueTech sells individual TriBox modules for $240. Now this is the physical modules. Customers can use a TriBox to access the TrueNet, TriNet, as well as other multi-user uh, gaming platforms. As a package deal, TrueNet, uh, TrueTech sells a TriBox system uh, modules plus a subscription for $250. Now that's basically similar to McGraw-Hughes, you know, connect and ebook system. So in one system, you have a physical module, which you can buy it separately for $240. And there's also this subscription, which you can also buy it separately for $60. But if you uh, purchase the whole system, you pay $250. Okay. Now, how many performance obligations are here if you are buying a system? Uh, of course, this is gonna be a contract, right? In the end, uh, you have, you know, delivers this a thousand system nowadays. 
to the customer at $250. Um, so there is a contract, of course. And number two, we're going to identify the performance obligations. We know uh, before we say this is distinct, and then you know if the good or service is distinct, when it is both capable of being a distinct, which is true, you can buy it separately and then use it on another gaming platforms, or you have to separately identifiable from other goods or services in the contract. Yes, you have two separate names. Of course, you can separately identify them. So this tribox system has two distinct goods. Therefore, the system includes two performance obligations. Now, we also have some special considerations. So when you purchase, especially for the electronic products, usually there's gonna be this one year guaranteed um, warranties for free attached to your product. In that sense, should this warranty be considered as a separate performance obligation or not? Now we call these warranties quality assurance warranty, and it is part of the performance obligation to deliver goods and services um, to make sure that it's free from defects. In this case, that warranty comes with your product is not gonna be categorized as a performance obligation separately. So if you say purchase a phone or you just purchase a microphone, um, these both have the you know one year warranties and each purchase should only be counted as one performance obligation. There's also this right of return, which is also not a separate performance obligations. It's also part of um, you know, the goods uh, that you're gonna deliver to your customers. But in other sense, if like, for example, when we purchase phones, there's, or any other like more expensive uh, electronic products, there's always a box coming out asking you, especially in Best Buy, are you going to purchase an extended two year warranties for say $24.99? These, we call it extended warranties. And it is an additional service that covers new problems arising after the customer takes control of the products. So, right, this is uh, other than, you know, the warranty, one year warranty attached. In that sense, we will treat the extended warranty the extra $24.99 as a separate performance obligations. So this is just something we have to make sure uh, we know. Um, this is the first two uh, steps to recognize revenue. And I'll see you in the next video to talk about the rest.